Hello everyone, I'm Rachel from the Innisfil Idea Lab and Library and today we're going to learn about Ink Stitch. Ink Stitch is an extension download that works with the Inkscape program. It will allow you to create embroidery files that will then work in any kind of embroidery machine. You can download this extension for free by going to inkstitch.org, selecting either Mac or PC and downloading that extension. You will need to restart your computer and then you can open up the Inkscape program. When you've opened up the Inkscape program, you can then go under the extension menu and you will see Ink Stitch and then you will see all the options that are available in that menu. When creating an embroidery design, I like to change my canvas size to ensure that that will be the exact size I want for my embroidery. Go to File, click on Document Properties, a new window will open. Under Format, instead of millimeters, change it to inches. And today we're going to make a 4 inch by 4 inch square embroidery design. You can then close that menu. You can also hit the plus key to zoom in on your canvas. Let's get to know this Ink Stitch menu a little bit better. Go to Extensions, click on Ink Stitch, and then click on Lettering. A new window is going to pop up. Here you'll see a text box where you can type in anything that you desire. Uh, today we're going to use It's Fall, y'all. And then you're going to see another window up here where it's going to now give you a preview of what it's going to look like when it's being embroidered. When you click the drop down menu, you're going to see a bunch of pre made font styles that you can choose from. Once you select one of them, your window will then update and show you the newest style of font that you've chosen. As you can see, there's quite a few different fonts that you can choose from. Some have different colors, some have different styles, but most of them are created with what's called a satin stitch. There is even a description of each font just underneath the drop down menu. Once you've found a font that you want to use, you can then click the Apply and Quit button that's just at the bottom of the window. Your text will look a little bit different and appear just above the canvas. You can click on it, and like any object in Inkscape, you can then size it and move it into the canvas. If you double click on the text, it will then break apart the letters and you can now move them individually. I like to create a box around each word and that way I'm able to move them around and group them as one solid object. If you would like your text to stay together grouped, you can draw a box around the selected letters, go up to options and click the group option. Now that our text is done, let's go over to the internet and start looking for some images to bring in to create an embroidery design. I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to type in Ghost SVG. This will narrow down your search because we're still looking for a black and white image. It's okay if there's a little bit of color in it, but something that has some hard lines. Remember, it is a sewing machine that we're going to be creating this design for, so it cannot do super detailed work. Find your image, just right click and hit copy image. You're going to go back into the Inkscape program, right click and hit paste. Now click on your image, you're going to go up to the path menu and select the third option down called trace bitmap. You'll notice a window that pops open on your right hand side with a picture of your ghost. You might have to adjust your threshold to lighten or darken the image. And then you're going to click the apply button. It may not look like it has done anything, but actually you're going to have two copies. The copy that has a white background, you can now delete it. You can click on your transparent looking image and you can also shrink it to size. Use the edit path tool, the second arrow on your left hand side under your toolbars and click on your image. You'll notice these little gray dots that are called nodes. You can draw a box around any objects that you do not want and you can click delete and it will remove them. Now size your image and place it on the inside of your canvas. Now we're going to simulate our design. Click and drag a box around all the objects in your canvas. Go up to the extension menu 
click on Ink Stitch, Visualize and Export, and then Simulator Realistic Preview. A window is going to now open. If it's your first time using Ink Stitch, it might take some time and it might run a little slow. This is going to give you a preview of what the embroidery machine is going to stitch out. You can see your design is starting to be virtually embroidered. If you would like to speed up the preview, you can click on the horse, and if you would like to slow it down, please clap it on the hippo. When it's done, you can hit the X in the top right hand corner. Let's start adding some color to our embroidery design. Click on your ghosts, go up to path, and hit the new option called split path. Now select the hearts or any part of your design. Go down to the bottom where you see all the colors at the bottom toolbar. Click on them and you can start changing the colors. This is changing the fill of any of the objects. To change the color of your text, you must hold down the shift key and choose any of the color swatches at the bottom. This is important because you're actually changing the stroke. So for your images, you're changing the fill color and for your text, hold down the shift key and you're changing the stroke. Now let's simulate our new colorful design. Select all of the images that are on your canvas, go up to extensions, hit ink stitch, visualize and export, and then simulator realistic preview. Now you'll see your updated colorful version of the stitch preview. Again, you can click on the horse to speed up the preview or click on the hippo to slow it down. Great, so let's try adding some more colors, maybe adding a fill to our ghosts. I'm gonna click on our first ghost and I'm actually gonna make a copy of it. So I'm gonna right click on it. I'm going to click duplicate, click and drag, there'll be a second one. And I'm gonna go up to path and then break it apart. Now I'm turning this into layers. So I'm gonna remove one of the layers and I'm gonna use this other layer and go down to the color swatches and change it. I'm going to now lay it over top of the other ghost and you'll notice it's covering the eyes. So I need to go up to the toolbar and I'm going to change the layer to put it behind the other layers. I'm going to repeat this step now with the other two ghosts. Remember to clean up any of the existing designs that are off the canvas because they will be actually captured by the program. So you can delete those ones off to the side. Now let's see what our updated version of the ghost with the colors and all the other embroidery designs that we've created. So we're gonna click a box and select all the objects in the canvas, go up to extensions, ink stitch, visualize and simulate, and then realistic preview. Now we can see an updated preview of what the embroider machine is actually going to stitch out of our design. You can see there's a bit of an understitch and then it will be doing an overstitch over top to kind of fill in all of those objects. Now when you do go to the embroidery machine, remember to do this in layers. So you're going to add all of your colors first and then again, the black outlines will probably be going on top. So you want that to be the last part that you'd be doing on the embroidery machine. Well, it looks like our embroidery design is completed, so we can start saving it. Everything looks good. I'm happy with how it turned out. So let's start saving it as an embroidery file. Now go up to File, Save As, and we're going to save the Inkscape version in case we need to edit it for any reason. And then I'm going to save a second version. So File, Save As, and we're actually going to save the completed embroidery version that will be going into the machine as a brother embroidery file, a PES. Once that's saved, you can then put it on a thumb drive, come to the library, or you'll be able to soon submit it to us online through our print queue. And that is how you create an embroidery file for the embroidery machine at the library, or creating any kind of embroidery file using InkStitch. I'm Rachel from the Innisfil Idea Lab and Library, and thanks for joining me.